Super. So I'm going to start with a very simple scenario and I want both of you to react in terms of how you think where all of this is going. Um, a nephew of mine in the US, uh, about 11 years old, 10 years old, uh, he was given homework by school and this homework was actually a, a printed sheet that he had to fill the answers, right? Um, and uh, as with most kids, he forgot about it and he had only, the next day he had to submit. Um, he opened ChatGPT and scanned the homework and asked ChatGPT, do the homework, right? Um, and then he copy pasted and uh, hit print and then submitted that. Okay. So, uh, what do you think is going on here? Do you think he's uh, doing the right thing? Uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. Yes. As a student or as like a First <laughs> student, then we will get as to… A, as a kid, I think he's doing the right thing because if I had the chance, I would also do that, right? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> right. Yes. But yeah, where is it leading us and what are we doing? And now this is happening in all kinds of uh, universities and schools and they're telling me they're thinking of going back to writing with hand, the answers and stuff. Is okay. that even possible? I don't know. I, we, I will give you another scenario, but let's first get there. So first tell me from an education standpoint, hmm. from a larger standpoint, what do you think? I think it's not very nice. Okay. Yeah, because I think at a very basic stage, we are taking away a lot of like questions and thinking that you can do and processing and all that. Right. Um, the AI is made to do that, whether it's uh, with uh, text or with images. So, you know, uh, as artists, I suddenly see like, you know, people are creating visionary art and putting it up and often forgetting to uh, credit the, of course. Uh, the software used, you know, but uh, nowadays people say, of course. but where is the creativity, where is the thought going and also the skill. Like, um, I think it should be trained, right? And we are trying to hone a thing. We are honing how to prompt now. Okay. So I'll, let me, I'll come back to that and push back on that. So I don't want this panel to be where we all agree with each other. AI is bad. AI is amazing. It has to be just to make all of you feel uncomfortable, whether you learnt whether AI is good or bad, I need, we need to leave you completely thoroughly, completely uncomfortable. That's the aim of this panel. Okay. So I will just extend what he said and uh, uh, ask you, five years ago before chat GTP was there, what are the smartest students doing? They were copy pasting from Wikipedia. See now what has happened is, that this large language model has created one layer of productivity on top of Wikipedia, right? So you don't have to choose what to copy paste, right? You don't have to change the complex language. It will summarize it, say make it sound like a 10 year old. Actually even better, you can give it your sample of writing and say, write my homework in my style so that the teacher cannot find out I use ChatGPT. You can literally tell ChatGPT to do that. So, my question to you is, as an AI ethicist, right, and um, is there, if I was a very uh, typical optimistic Silicon Valley tech bro saying that this is just simply the relentless progress of access to knowledge. And in that, of course, there will be some, uh, you know, uh, these kinds of disasters with homeworks. Maybe the right question to ask is, is homework meaningful? So, your thoughts. I, th I think you, s you asked the right question already. Is homework meaningful? You, you know, we are, like yesterday, you, I asked, as an audience, I asked you a question about our three meals culture, and you said it's, an, it's a result of the industrial revolution, the factory job. Yes. So our education system is a product of uh, the clerical jobs. Exactly. And we haven't evolved even as a little bit. Now, I know, like Apupan mentioned here, I know many universities, uh, engineering colleges in Kerala, the directors told me, we now ask students to submit handwritten assignments. Then I asked them, they will be writing from ChatGPT, but they will at least read it. Yes. And, and it goes beyond. No, the Norwegian representative for uh, OECD uh, told me that they are thinking of uh, abolishing exams as a whole. Yeah. So we have been lagging behind in education for a long time. Correct. And we never caught up. People can, I mean, I, I studied in Loyola and uh, I used to be the topper in my class, BA history. And I, I was always proud about it. And then there is this one student, he's very rich, I know that. But it was in 2003, 2005. Uh, and uh, he's not the brightest. 
But one time he came and he scored the highest mark for an assignment. And how dare it happen? I can't accept it. So I took his assignment. I want to see what, what did I do wrong. Yes. It, it was printed and all. But then I saw these numbers after every paragraph. He printed it out from Wikipedia. Wikipedia, of course. My teachers were not smart enough to recognize it. You know that. That was the problem then. But I'm going to, to take his point, I'm going to raise the stakes a little bit. Okay. There is a 16 or 17 year old in, um, in the US who has actually used Lego Mindstorms, you know, the, the robotics things, right? So where you can use Lego, you can build these machines and then program them. Now you can also connect large language models and AI models to these machines, okay? And uh, the way he's constructed it is that there is a pen that it is holding at the end, right? He has fed it his notebook and notebook of his handwriting. He has built a model of his handwriting. So his point about we will ask students to write, of course, I think there's going to be a small Lego robot that will now do the writing for you. Now, how will you tell the difference? So I mean, my, my point here is that everything for the last three, four years, every time I've heard people come and pontificate 10 years ago that computers will never be able to draw. I remember that. Cars can never drive themselves. 10 years ago, I've heard, right? Two years ago, I've heard that computers can, AI can never reason. AI can never replace human creativity. My point is that every year, there is a new benchmark, right? So in that sense, if now you can have a robot that is writing your homework for you in your handwriting, what does that mean for the world of anything, for learning, for art, for painting, for music? I think it's uh, leading to a lot of stuff and we're only seeing the happy end of it, uh, which is being given to us to play with. Yes. You know, there are lots of things behind it and uh, we are not yet able to see it. Correct. So, so it'll be good for you to explore on the, we only see the fact that I can type something, I'm getting answers, right? I can type a prompt and say, generate me a comic panel in the style of Apupan. Yes. With empty and with this text, right? And then I will make my own comic uh, and and also sell it for Bitcoin and all of that. <laughs> so, so explain to me the, yeah. the things that you see as, a, as an artist, for example, the unseen effects of this kind of AI. Yeah, a lot of people ask me if uh, I think uh, the AI is going to make a comic or do the job that I do. I don't see it directly like that because there's a lot of uh, uniqueness in the way we would write or we would draw uh, and actually uh, I think it's more threatening in the larger sense like because I don't survive fully on comics I survive on doing branding identity or something like that that is very easy to train the AI on I couldn't train the AI on the best identity like millions of them and tell it to recreate an identity a logo like yeah. a whole brand manual yeah. and it'll do it very fast and very cheap now, it, most of it comes down to uh, things that can be done faster and cheaper. Uh, I don't think anybody's really looking forward to my book like faster or anything, but uh, I don't think it gets into that individual creative space, right. but I am not going to get freelance work to support myself to do that work that I want to do. Right. So it's a little more roundabout. Interestingly, we did uh, this graphic novel with this French scientist guy. So I proposed the idea that uh, after we finished the story, uh, we've set the story to one place, ending. Then we call in AI, and we feed the story that we've written to the AI. Uh, only thing right now, we have to feed it separately, the drawing and the text. So, but it will it will become multimodal now. It will yeah. become. Yeah. So we have we prompted uh, we prompted with the whole story so far, yeah. and we say, okay, give us five scenarios of the projected future from here. Yes. So one case, the ethical responsible AI is working very well and it's uh, spreading across the world. In the second case, no, the corporations have taken over and they're doing whatever they want and people are like, uh, there's unemployment and a uh, lot of control, surveillance, all that is happening. That's scenario two. Then we go on like that uh, till a zombie apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, why not? Yes. That's indeed. the thing with AI, right? Yeah. Like, uh, so we got the written stuff down. Yeah. 
uh, we've, we've clearly mentioned that this is the AI generated part based on what we've written. Right. And we've also given the prompts we used, including the prompts we used for each image. So right. it can't do that comic thing. So we have to break it down and say this much text. And I would have to think what image to put for that and prompt for the image separately. Correct, yes. It, it has been trained on 800 of my drawings from the book. Yes. So it's trying to draw like me. Yeah. It's not as good as me, I should say. <laughs> but yes. if I give it more material, Correct. it'll be as good. Yeah. It's just that it had only 800 drawings. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. I don't want to give it all my styles. I just want to give it the style of this book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. but, I, but eventually, I think there will come a time when... Um, you, everyone can run their own models in yeah. a reasonably private enough setup. Yeah, I think, isn't it just about how much you train it with? Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. So as an AI ethicist now, I also want you to speak to the audience about, see today we just casually go, type something, get some answers, use it. Uh, we type a prompt, get an image, use it. Now we can type a text and generate a video, a runway ML and a whole range of these things. And we are not too far away from an entire movie being generated from type text. Yeah. Okay. Now, everyone is just excited, amazed, etc., etc. But as an AI ethicist, what are the questions that we should be asking? So, generally, the AI ethics itself asks two broader questions. What is the ethics of this particular AI tool? And secondly, what is the ethics of using an AI for this particular occasion? So, there is this paper I reviewed uh, last year. It has this uh, thought experiment called a human mulching machine, M human mulch machine. So mulch is the topsoil. Uh, and uh, so the idea here is somebody created an AI powered robotic machine, which will transform senior citizens into mulch. <laughs> so essentially killing people to turning into soil. Correct. Now yes. they are coming and saying, see, our AI tool is responsible AI. Author, sustainable right? also. It's sustainable. The privacy of the victims are stored, you know, maintained. Correct. There is accountability. There is uh, explainability. Yeah. All the pillars of this responsible AI. Yeah, so, exactly. So that's what's happening right now. Yeah. yeah. So it reminds me of a joke where uh, a boss comes to an employee and says, hey, I need to present to our board uh, responsible AI and ethics, right? Can you please give me a PowerPoint presentation, right? So that guy goes to chat GPT and say, please give me 10 <laughs> points about AI ethics. And he's asking chat GPT. And yeah. that, so that is right now what is happening is that <laughs> people are in a complete circular loop. I, I have a better example. Yeah. So uh, I was in uh, London, Royal Society. They were hosting an Indo-UK discussion on AI. I met with this wonderful woman who is the head of a major tech company, policy head in UK. And she was uh, telling, you know, how difficult it is to work with the uh, policy makers because right. they don't like bullet points. They wanted things to be in five, six pages. So she said she used Copilot. I just put it in the Copilot, you know, chat GPT, and I will ask it to expand five, six pages, and I give. Yeah. And I said, yeah, we all do that. This was during the breakfast. During the lunch, I was speaking with this guy from Wales who is a policy uh, analyst. And uh, he says, oh, it's very frustrating. You know, people from, you know, these companies, they send this huge five, six page briefs. Yes. So I put it in chat GPT and asked for summary. <laughs> yes. In fact, I think I've now seen, um, there are many questions. So nowadays, if you see, uh, if you type something in Google, it will show you a preview of the most popular answers right up front. And then regularly, answers from Quora end, end up being shown because it's very well search engine optimized and there's some voting and all of that, right? Krishna Shok wife. <laughs> I mean, whoever you search. Krishna Shok age. <laughs> yes. No, no. But the interesting thing is some complex questions are there and there'll be a Quora answer. Funnily enough, many answers that now Google has indexed, you know, what is the answer? Sorry, I am a large language model with data training only up to September 2023. <laughs> oh. This has now been indexed by Google and is giving it as the answer for a question that people are asking. So there is now a deeper uh, issue without people understanding. Where Google, is, Google is cheap enough uh, not to take a $20 subscription of uh, GPT-4. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right? So, so now um, I want to now touch upon a particularly sensitive topic in the context of AI and the visual uh, domain in general. Right? Uh, it, it goes without saying, I think we've, with Midjourney 6, we have now we have now reached the point where most average people, 
cannot make out the difference between AI generated and real image. The, the realism is reached a point where even, even people who are really working with those tools, with version 6 now, it's very difficult to tell the difference, okay? And it will only keep getting better. And this raises two points. So one is that every Hollywood, Bollywood, and every top privileged, very rich you know, uh, person, a public person, is rushing over the next one or two years to digitize themselves. Their likeness, we're not talking about their intellect, that will also come at some point, we'll speak about that. But they're for sure digitizing the 3D model of their voice and their physical self, and then saying that as I get older, if uh, your movie needs to show a 20-year-old, you know, or a 40-year-old or 50-year-old Mamuti, um, you will pay me for the use of the AI model. Now the f first most popular use of this is the person who voiced Darth Vader. Right? Uh, but in this case, it's only voice, right? So he's now 90. So he has, Disney now has enough recordings of his voice to make Darth Vader movies for the next thousand years. Okay. So on the one hand, there is that, right? And eventually you can think about the fact that everyone can own the digital representation of their physical selves and all that. Which brings us to the point about deep fakes. Yeah. Because we know, right? And uh, one of the top security researchers I know once told me that our fundamental problem with how we think about security is that we think that we can only keep things safe by adding more and more complex passwords, yeah. meaning ampersand, underscore, 20 characters, it has to have, uh, you have to remember the, your fourth pet when you were seven years old, all of that stuff you have to do. So basically we are really bad at that. And what do they tell you? They say, please don't store that password. Don't write the password in your notebook. Okay. And he says that's bad advice. He says that for thousands of years, human beings have been very good at securing physical objects. We have fantastic track record. We have vaults, we have pockets, we have locks. We are very good at that. You know what we are not good at? Securing a doc file, a PPT file, or a text file. Right? So, the weird sense here is that for sure there will be hacks. Yes. And we already know it's there, right? Yeah. Because you can now get a deep fake of literally anyone saying anything. Obama saying something he did not, Biden saying something he did not, Trump saying something he did not. And it will. Now, we have big elections coming up in India, in the US, in many of these countries now. And these will start to become a problem because people. So, on the one hand, we will get to the, the ethics and the back-end technology side with Jibu, but I want you to sort of comment on, as a public and a consuming public, yeah. if I go to Twitter today, Facebook today, and I see a video, I see something, I see somebody saying something, what should be my first response as a AI knowledgeable citizen? There was a good example recently uh, where Modi called out an AI-generated uh, a uh, video of himself, did you see that? Have you guys seen the Melody videos? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No, uh, Quite hilarious, th yes. There was a man who Modi claimed was uh, AI generated. Right. Then he came up and said, no, I'm a real guy. I look like Modi, like, you know. So that fear of the deep fake, yes. or maybe because the thinking is from the deep fake perspective, Correct. he thinks it's more common for a deep fake to appear than a man to look like him. Wow. Isn't that like... It's a know? very interesting thing because you actually, as you point out, there are two categories of social problems. Yeah. One is you see some content, it's actually fake, and you think it's real. Yeah. That's one problem. That's right. But actually, actual <laughs> social scientists are worried about the other problem. Yeah. You see something that is real, and you think it's now fake. Yeah. And that also causes bigger problems. So right? This just opens up this whole space for... Pandora's box. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like we don't know what to... Like, uh, there's, actually, there's a good, uh, not very successful movie called The Congress uh, with Robin Wright Penn, where they actually take her and try to do this 3D thing. 
telling her that you know we all want to see robin wright pen from princess bride we you know we you made bad choices after that as an actor yes and we want to see you like that now we will be able to like use you in whichever way with this so it actually explores this whole Absolutely. digitization thing Absolutely. and uh, she's worried that they'll so she in the contract she says no porn and all that yeah. uh, but they are like very upset like no, why yeah. why robin so so rule there is a rule 34 of the internet ah. which is that if it exists the pornographic version of it exists there is there is no way you can stop it in fact a lot of technological innovation cutting edge innovation of technology on the internet first happens in pornography then it happens then it in comes yeah things. exactly like uh, you know uh, the the secret dream of everybody going for ai is somewhere there correct you know yes, you exactly need, that is the you first need, you need first. like a, a a bot which can do things so no, so the, yeah so you have virtual girlfriends already now already. already so i want to sort of go to you now and kind of step behind the scenes and say if i was a large technology company and if i was a civil society if i was a, a government regulator and so on what should i be what should i be doing to minimize the risks of these things i know so maybe walk us through things like watermarking and any other things that you come across as practical and also tell us what will work and what will not work yeah uh, so before that i want to add something to your last question also because i think deep fakes has been there for many years and uh, yes. the general idea was that deep fakes looks like this early mid journey pictures you know very superficial things like that yeah. but that dreshmika mandana video just yes. changed yes. the game yes now the challenge here is there is a website where i can pay 99 rupees a month and i can get any song sang by uh, any of this prominent Anyone. people yes. i have a quite a personal album of modi ji singing all my favorite songs <laughs> it's a good sound i say yes the thing is it's not just the voice yes his accent yes he he's not singing in, in yeah. malayala he's singing is his, his hindi malayalam yeah yeah you know his tone everything is recreated yeah. yes yes now my worry is that in in the election time let's say there is a video it could it looks like a cctv footage let's Correct. say you know yes. grainy you can make it look dark. like anything yes yes yeah. and let's say maybe a prominent opposition leader insulting a idol yeah. yes because it looks like a cctv footage people don't think it's deep fake yes yes and second problem is for a long time see our politicians are the best liars in the world we all agree with that yes so first you know richard nixon has to resign because of an audio recording yeah audio recording yes, was yes. a credible the uh, evidence oval office records all of these the watergate yeah. incident yes, yes. Uh, photography used to be a very solid evidence still photoshop came now yes. everyone is that is photoshop that is photoshop yes now video is the most permissible evidence even in some i heard a politician yeah. say this is video shop yeah. i know the, the photoshop is video shop yeah. <laughs> yeah now they are going to say it's generative ai generative AI. we generative already AI. have politicians Fake. coming and saying it's generative ai exactly the second problem so right. that's first second uh, coming to your question on what can we do i think china has done <laughs> quite well in the space i think they came up with a uh, guidelines and regulation like in 2020 to 2023 yes. yes so what they have proposed is first algorithmic auditing correct whatever this algorithm is they wanted to audit it and the data set so ge- for generative ai they had to make sure there is no tiananmen square right there is no winnie the pooh yes, <laughs> yes. i don't know if you guys know the winnie yeah, the yeah. pooh because xi jinping looks like the winnie the pooh Yeah so there are some jokes and there yeah. are many references so, that you can So so they yeah. have so that's in that's enforceable by law. Yeah. Then they have watermarking. Yeah. And few other elements. So they are on top of things. So it it is interesting because um in India one of the things I common find is that many people know we want the freedoms and the innovation of west but we want the dictatorial totalitarianism of China. we want the economic uh, growth of singapore right so i it almost feels like um solutions in a place like india on the longer run would have to be completely grounded in india with a culture the, this thing the diversity all of that is very different the the things that are there is no way the state has capacity here to regulate and manage ai at all Hey, we can barely manage uh, you know a, a, a trash collection on the road so <laughs> ai regulation is the last thing and they will not have the skill or the capacity or the number of employees and the ability to do that right and again it's internet it's all transnational right i mean yeah, how many ips will you block right uh, we don't have that capacity so it's it's not just about that for example for a long time our 
IT companies and everyone weren't particular about uh, data protection and everything till GDPR came in Europe. Yeah, of course. Yes, right? Now, yes. there is an EU act that's coming. Yes. So, we will be forced to True. True. adopt some of this elements. Watermarking and from the... Yeah, uh, yeah it's a risk-based risk approach EU has, right? right? Yes. So, that's one thing because in the end, it's, it's, uh, uh, when it started to affect the profit of the tech companies, Correct. it will yes. change. Yes. But in long term, see, the regulating also poses a question. Yeah. What if we gets behind in innovation by yeah. trying to regulate. Correct. And every policy maker I have spoken across the globe, yes. they always have this fear element. Yes. What if we miss out? Yeah. So if you read China's AI strategy, it's called, uh, it's based on this asymmetric warfare strategy. Yeah. They can't win US in a direct battle, so they just use use yeah. an misinformation AI, 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 right? AI. right? Yes. Yeah. So th there is this fear. That's why nobody has, except for EU, who, we, who regulates everything. Correct. They, they even put, made Apple to put a USB-C on their yes. phones, right? Yes. So that's the question. Yeah. What will happen to the innovation? What will Absolutely. happen to the ecosystem? It'll be interesting. So I have a time to I always ask the more, escalate the, you know, the <laughs> scenarios and ask you to comment on it. We spoke about generative art. We spoke about the ethics of it. We spoke about the potential fact that, as you rightly said, for example, marketing, this kind of, you know, I already know many Indian brands are now saving lakhs and crores on hiring um, agency, doing a photo shoot yeah. for a product brand shoot. Many of them have completely moved to Mid Journey and uh, Dali and other things. Yeah. And it is, it is now, it is going to be a complete bloodbath there. Right? Now, so that is fine. Then we spoke about kids doing homework, education, impact and all that. Then we spoke about the ethics of uh, AI being trained on other people's work. How do they going to compensate it and all that. Now, let's kind of up the, so, and we spoke about deep fakes and pornography. Now, a little bit more sensitive, but not as sensitive as that, right? Uh, there is now, all our lives are there on the internet, okay? See, Google and Facebook knows you and me and Jibu better than we do, okay, right? They are able to predict what you will click on, they are able to predict, etc. right? So, it is safe to say that a personal like a small language model trained on your behavior, your videos, your content, your work, et cetera, et cetera. One of the interesting use cases that is emerging is what happens when people die, okay? So there are companies now coming up that are offering the ability to chat with someone who has passed away yeah. with incredible yeah. accuracy, yeah. right? And once you add in the generative video component of this, people will rush to make sure that before they die, as I write a will, yeah. I'm also creating my post-death avatar yeah. that you can continue to chat with and who knows, maybe let it make some financial decisions also right, for the rest of the family. Yeah. As, a so, as a society, how should we look at what I fundamentally see as Changes happening so fast that we simply do not have the, let alone tech, not just technology maturity, the cultural maturity to even understand whether this is right or wrong or what are the long-term consequences. How do you as an artist, I mean, artists are some of the most deeply sensitive and tuned to the, they're the most miserable people I've generally seen. Say right? that. So therefore, yeah. uh, but no, but great art comes from misery, right? But, <laughs> How do you see these kinds of things happening? How do you... Can I add a, add a question to that? Yes. Now, let's or say Apupan got... Art. Let's say Apupan got kidnapped. Yes. Okay? He is missing. Yes. But then his uh, uh, work is continuously coming in Instagram. It's coming. Yes, it's so posting. So the police yeah, is, is posting. He's yes. posting it. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's actually Ukrainian software developer who has... Uh, what he has done is he's trained a personal large language model, fine-tuned an open source one. He does freelance IT work. Um, his, uh, how he does is that he, I, he will charge $5,000 a day for him and he will charge $1,000 a day to work with his uh, avatar. So he is now, he's parallel processed himself. His avatar will respond to emails, solve tickets, write code, do all of that things. But at a significantly lower quality than him. But yeah, you pay less, etc. So every person can now become like 10 people now. So I'm, I'm just saying that in the context of something like as as deeply human as death, how do we deal with technology 
disrupting the fundamental uh, the culture and value system around a human reality like death like very smartly like you know you pull on all these emotional threads that and and what most people would be happy to use or find some gimmicky thing to like you know uh, that's how it's getting through to people uh, i would always look at it and go back one step and say there is no going back from here uh, any tech person i ask about any problem they are like more tech is the only solution and it's always growing up like he said about the passwords so we are going to have more and all this ampersand and everything you're putting the ai is going to finish it in like point yes. Three yes. nine seconds yes. or something yeah, like yeah. once that. we get quantum even encryption is going to go up it's a different problem okay yeah. so that's one this uh, mid journey thing you talked about there was a list leaked recently of all the artists they used to train the yes on. including by the way the the list of to so be, we know to we be. know that the text ones no there yeah. is a very legendary for those all the internet people will know the young people will know there's a books 3 dot torrent uh -huh. okay it contains 180000 books it is the single biggest torrent of yeah. 180000 books it was used to train all these large language exactly. models so yeah. publishers are like are you kidding me are you kidding? Yes. yeah exactly and, yes. uh, in the second in the list that is uh, like to be trained there's uh, mf hussein and raza and all like you know and if, if we get popular enough, now we probably look forward to being in that list or something. Yeah. Uh, It'll be there. Yeah, but uh, okay, going back, like, you know, is, shouldn't the basic thing be like, they, they always say AI betters your life. Uh, one, how, two, at what cost? Yeah. Um, I think it's very profit driven and uh, yes. very business sided. That's why uh, more tech is always the answer. We can't like even have a choice if you want to live in a hut somewhere also and not be part of it. It's not going to work it's out. Not going to work. Yeah. Yes. So uh, how that regulation part is very important. And I think um, when I talk to the people in Europe about it, um, they cannot see the reality I'm trying to present from India. They cannot see the scale of things. Yeah. Um, and it's usually about uh, you know. They will be people will be free from their jobs and will be free to pursue their uh, other passions and all that. You know, tell that to somebody who's. Uh, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I think it's very yeah. softened. Yes, I'm from the advertising world. Yes, I know how we present things. Yes, we take the weakness of the company and we highlight it yeah, as yes. the strength. Correct, correct, so yes. here there's a lot of like double speak happening Absolutely, and. Yeah. You know, people so, are so to be fair. Advertising has been manipulating us for hundred years. Yes. Now somebody else is manipulating ten times more efficiently. That yes. is Diamonds right. are the best friend. <laughs> so, but you know, I it, it's an interesting follow-up question there to uh, a technological element of, of this entire thing, right? Um, it will now start to get to the point where a lot of generative AI in the use of things like healthcare would start to happen, right? We're already seeing protein folding happening at like, yes. you know, thousand times more efficiency than humans. So drugs, personalized drugs will come out quicker, faster, more nanotechnology and so on, right? I mean, you're going to start to see things like um, anti-aging things. So the, we do believe right now that the first person to live up to 150 has already been born. That's the, that's the current estimate from futurists, right? And it will start to become a reality because we will start to figure out ways to undo the damage of aging and keep things in control. But it might mean small machines running around in your blood fixing things. And I'm sort of worried about that time when one of my nanobots in my blood sends me a message saying, hey, your EMI payment is due. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you do not pay, or by the way, you can take the premium package for, you know, and, and all of that. So how should we as a society not just solve see we are barely able to solve the ethics problems of today's ai with mid journey and deep fakes how are we going to address tomorrow's problems that we can't even begin to imagine so apuban mentioned a very good point we uh, i think uh, very relevant that is techno solutionism yes adding more technology is not always a solution it yeah, yeah. creates more or less for yeah. example the issue of bias in ai yes it's a social problem correct right uh, whether it's, not an AI it's, it's a social problem yeah, yeah, yes and the ai is mirroring it mirroring. but how 
technology technologists are uh, you know addressing it is by adding more things you know tweaking the weightage all those things right yes. now secondly the future i want to bring two movies and one uh, example one uh, professor told me the movies are dune yeah and foundation the apple series yes they are both future you know space wearing uh, humanity yeah. where there is no ai ai has been banished they are post ai few science fiction yes AI, it's very important yes so so then this uh, professor from iit madras b ravindran amazing guy he was telling me what if tomorrow's politics will be pro ai and non pro ai yes there might be political parties that want more jobs like how the anti immigrant and pro immigrant parties are now correct yes so we so we i mean Uh, we are nobody to predict future because yeah, yeah, uh, there is this uh, example in 1933 september 11 uh, lord rutherford publicly said that it is impossible to generate power by splitting the atom yes same day nuclear uh, same chain day. reaction was discovered yeah, 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 exactly. so so we can't so that's why we don't know but i like a world where uh, the post ai world that will be better yeah so i know it's interesting we're not even already there and we are in a country where see one, one of the, thing yes. to add you mentioned about yes. the protein folding i think forget chat gpt forget generative ai the biggest accomplishment we humanity had with ai is alpha fold exactly which is deep mind so deep yes. mind is doing phenomenon work which they're not getting attention yeah, yeah. because everything goes to open it's behind the scenes it is it, like it is happening yeah. behind the scenes right but yes absolutely i think see the foundational idea of now transformer models and now mamba and all of that right it is now all of a sudden the digital equivalent of what politicians and military people in the 1940s found themselves with the ability to unleash the power of the the atom this is literally unleash the power of knowledge and information uh, by simply being able to do matrix multiplications really really fast and a lot of them um at what cost to the planet in terms of the data center and the global warming is a different issue but i want to sort of maybe one last thing we'll escalate it further okay one last escalation and then we'll go to the audience right um so in these we spoke about death we spoke about education and so in a sense we covered the the early part of human life in fact we covered healthcare life we spoke about extending life and so on So I think what remains is the is the thing that we spend most of our life and is very fundamentally human. We are social beings. It was what makes us different from uh, chimpanzees. Despite 98 percent of our genes being the same as you know uh, chimpanzees, we are clearly social. A chimpanzee can collaborate with five chimpanzees. A human being can collaborate with millions, mm. right? And we've used mechanics like religion and uh, you know money and law and nation states in order to achieve those kinds of things and so relationships at various levels intimate relationships you know um, marital relationships um, social relationships corporate relationships and so on have all been very central quad quad you can't build without a pyramid or a bridge or a skyscraper without people collaborating now one of the key things i've seen recently is this uh, virtual ai generated instagram influencer uh, also doubling as what we call a virtual girlfriend right so there is a one of the things social media has done is precipitate a loneliness crisis see historically the idea was that um i need to spend my time focused by myself in my own head thinking about how to solve problems but a necessary part of human growth is spending time with other people yeah. right and so many studies have shown that the if as a child you don't spend time with other children you're seriously mentally oh. developmentally stunted and so on right? it is very crucial okay right deprivation of company which is why you know solitary confinement and all that is like so scary yeah. for for all it's considered torture and so on so the interesting thing now is that as the internet came somehow we somehow let slip the fact that we let a lot of young people say i'm getting this company virtually why do i have to go out yeah. right i'm getting it while playing call of duty while playing you know dota while playing you know uh, all of those games fortnite and all of that but we now know it's not the same thing you have to be in a physical space with people you have to you know even the whole work from home work from office crisis that we're all going through now right and now to escalate this you now have virtual girlfriends so the other interesting thing that has happened in the west is that 
um, if you look at rates of uh, college, people getting into college and graduating and etc., etc., women are outdoing men. So it turns out the moment you let women have the freedom to do these things, they're generally better than men at it, yeah. right? And that, in turn, is making women say, I don't need this guy as a partner. Sure. I mean, so, the, so the number of men who will never get partners is at an all-time high. Sure. And this entire group has now largely spent time on social media, become incels, gone and shot up schools. They've done all of that. Okay? And now, they are going to be wearing a headset and having a relationship with a virtual girlfriend at the simple rate of $10 per month or something like that. So in this world, how would you, would you say that this is something that, boss, having seen what social media has done to society, I will ban it on day one. Or do you think that we can't do nothing, anything about this also? I, I, again, it's how we are approaching this. Uh, now, when you see in the beginning, the AI uh, that we were talking to or we were interacting with, there's a very high, uh, uh, it, it's always trying to please you. There is a bias to please you. Yes. And uh, this has been working successfully in many arenas, as you can see. Like, you have a secret hatred inside you. Now, somebody says that hatred is okay. Somebody says it's okay to, like, go and kill your neighbor. Bias, yeah because, you know, he hurt your sentiment or some uh, figment of he your imagination. He left an angry comment on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, we are making all that okay. So where it leads to is I'm getting into a bubble where I'm feeling very good with whatever I am. Yes. That's what we want to hear. Yes. The AI is trained to please you. So whatever issues you have and whatever, like, you know, evil things you think, the AI will tell you, good, nice boy. Like, you know, the, we agree with you. Yes. Like, yes. almost like it said, like, 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 or something yeah. like that. Uh, but we like to hear that. As people and with the social media training, yeah. we are living for likes. And uh, we don't really have meaningful conversations on that. Yeah, yeah. We are very happy to just get... So I think as people, it's okay if even a machine tells us the things we want to hear. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if yeah. It's, uh, it's machine... Uh, because human beings are not telling that. No, we're not seeing them. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, also, if you tell me something I don't want to hear, I don't want to hang with you. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but exactly, like, you yeah. know, my machine, my girlfriend... Yeah, one dead. unfollow, one block button. Yeah, right, yeah, $10 yes. a month, I'm getting to say everything. I'm going to, you know, like, abuse her or whatever I want to do. Yes. And then, you know, I get to be the good guy also. Like, you know, yeah. it's a power trip which yeah. you... Uh, like, made into units for every person to yeah. feel entitled about. Yes. Um, I think, we, as a society, we're feeding on something like that. Is it, is does it feel like, the last point here is just that, before we get to questions, is that, see, as a society, we have agreed that it's a good idea to uh, block, ban, regulate cocaine and heroin and, you know, and, and these kinds of things, right? Yeah. right? At least the hardest ones, the methamphetamine and all of that, because we know they have a direct effect on your brain that is just actively harmful for collective human society, and we've agreed, somehow broadly agreed, exceptions, you know, there, is, do you think some elements of how we will use AI will go down that same path? Because having a virtual girlfriend and getting that dopamine rush, I don't think is any different from actually doing MDMA or uh, any of these things. Till she break up with you for not paying the subscription? <laughs> subscription fees. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to no, take uh, no coffee <laughs> or uh, yeah. going so, out. So, so one big thing is, I mean, we might remember Isaac Asimov's laws of robotics. Robotics, right? yes. So, one work I'm doing, you know, with the group of experts with World Economic Forum is we are trying to create red linings. Yes. So, the rule number one is an AI should always identify itself as an AI. AI. Right. Right. Yeah. It can't rep rep represent anyone. So, we are working on this list, and I think. Let's say we have like 10, 15 solid rules. Another one is an AI cannot come into contact with a biotechnology facility without a human supervision. Without human supervision. So, which, which, yeah, correct, exactly. So I think, I think we will soon reach a point. Let's assume all the... All so countries. this, I'm assuming, also extends to autonomous drones yeah. that the kill decision has to be made by a human. Yeah. And it cannot yeah. make an autonomous... It, yeah decision to launch a missile. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that's the thing, right? So once we reach that point where, let's say, all the countries come together, uh, you know, I mean, there are various organizations, yeah. and we decide these are the red lines. Yes. You know, these are the, like we did with nuclear technology, uh, 
yeah. that uh, bio weapons, yeah. uh, you know, chemical weapons and all. That's the ideal scenario. Yes. But remember, we are facing climate change and yes. we have done nothing about We've it. We've done, yeah. And so how can we be optimistic? Right? I mean, like the West has messed up the atmosphere, now telling India and China not to build factories, right? So it is a, I also feel that we managed to solve the nuclear crisis in the middle of a cold war. Yeah. But now the problem is it's not a bipolar, bipolar world. world. It is a fragmented world where people are just divided, living in their own bubbles. And also look at the cost of this running these things, right? It takes almost a million dollar for yes. ChatGPT to run one day. Yes, and yes. somebody told to generate one answer, it takes the power of charging your whole phone. Yes, yes. exactly. So All right. This On, uh, sorry, yes. Yeah. I have something that we came across while researching. Yes. Uh, my friend, the scientist, was very concerned about this. Uh, as, as, like, over the years when technology comes, there is always a individual, there's individual research, there, is, there are universities, and there's state-sponsored research looking at social aspects and social ways to, like, spread this into the world. But now, like he said, it's become so expensive that only a few companies, not even countries, can own this larger absolutely, thing. Absolutely. So, the all whoever can buy NVIDIA chips is the only yeah. people who can. And all the research and all the push forward is for profit making things only, not for the society. Even yeah. UAE is on four year waiting list for NVIDIA chips. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. On that note, on that rather dystopian note, so we will open it up for uh, questions. Yes, please. Hello? Yes. Just like in present day, today, the, where there is an industrial made product and a handicraft product, will there, will there be in the future where we will have an AI made art product or um, a human made handicraft pro product which is highly specialized, highly uh, expensive, um, I will more prefer it. Yeah. You want to take that? I think, he, I guess, he AI made product, human made product, I mean, you will pay more for the human made product. It will it become a... Like, like how we say, no, this is handicraft, this is China make, like that, you know, same yeah, thing, exactly. yeah, like that. I, th I, I think most of the market would prefer the mass-produced stuff and that will move faster. So yeah. that's The richest people will buy the handicraft stuff. Yeah. Richer people will buy that or if you're extra, like, um, careful about these things. But that's exactly the problem. We put it in without a regulation and that's what will happen. Exactly. So we right. need to draw those red lines really fast. Right, exactly. Yes. Hi. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the identities. Uh, so yesterday I was looking at uh, Dali using this Bing. In Bing there is some option to generate pictures. Yeah. Uh, like with Dali. Yes. And I was trying to, uh, you know, like get pictures of people who are trans and Muslims, uh, or Malayali Muslim for instance. I was trying random identities. Right. On basic on, rooted on Muslim identities. Right. And all the pictures I was getting was uh, resembling white, very good looking white Arab kind of looks. Right. And my prompt was based on those people who are, for example, a transgender, uh, uh, trans woman in a masjid. Yes. And immediately AI chat was kind of apologizing as if like that question was bit, not apologizing, kind of a warning that no, like it's a sensitive question. Yeah. Uh, we hope it doesn't have offend you. Somewhat in the sort of a very apologetic sense. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was finding like it quite discriminating in a sense that yes. like adding an apology for uh, creating a picture. Yes. As if the makers of AI doesn't want to get you know uh, get controversial in in a way. Also like this sort of obsession with Arab identities or something. Correct, like correct, you have yes. a lot of data about Muslims here. Yes. The racial varieties or historical varieties or whatever. Yes. But why still it is obsessed with this? Fair thing, you no know, fairness, white, so, so colored I, bodies, I, and all. I think I, you know, we'll address both the social as well as the right. You want to speak about the data yeah, biases. Yeah. So, so it's it's all about the data set on which it is being trained. Yeah. For example, forget Arab or religious background. The, the somebody found out that if I ask to generate a picture of a doctor and nurse, the doctor will be always male. And the nurse will be always female, right? Yes. So a sci scientist, CEO. Same everything. thing. Uh, put uh, put the picture of uh, po most popular five world leaders under the Eiffel Tower. There is no Modi. No. Yeah. No. Not. I see. <laughs> look. You know, if you put, uh, if you ask for food, if you Indian food, no, you'll only get uh, butter chicken and paneer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about the you data set yeah. on which it is trained. So yeah. uh, in the end, it all. 
uh, breaks down to that. That's why it's a social problem also. Right. But, but I do want to touch upon the second aspect of what you mentioned, which I think is a little bit more tricky. Okay. In, because these uh, large language models, because I've been tracking them since they first got access, when the API got access, when there were no guardrails. When there were no guardrails, we could do all that he said. Okay. Then all of a sudden, all our media said, hey, look, chat GPT is racist, this is racist, it's anti-Semitic, it is uh, Islamophobic. And then suddenly, these bunch of scientists with no social studies knowledge, humanities knowledge, clumsily implemented guardrails and very random guardrails. I can generate uh, Buddhist uh, lesbians in Hong Kong, but I cannot generate trans Muslim in Masjid. Yeah, they just simply decided, somebody decided that I know I don't want to take the risk or whatever. Right. So this, this is again a fundamental deeper social issue. I'm not actually expecting the AI scientists to solve this. Yeah. This is a humanities problem. Yeah. How, how do you think we should approach mm -hmm. these kind of, right, you know, how, how does an AI get to decide what will offend me? Or do I have to just obey the broad average cultural restrictions in one part of the world? I think we're going with that. We're going with like some blanket solutions because we don't have specific cases studied. Even the EU laws that came out are said they'll decide case by case on many things. So I think we have a whole gamut of things to decide on. And I don't think it's really possible. Um, we have to use AI to like decide on that many things no, at the same time. Somebody will go to chat GPT and say, how do you make, yeah. how do you decide? Yeah, how, because in the beginning you will ask ChatGPT the, uh, chat that the answers are becoming different now yeah. with the kind of bias. And I think we should highlight the bias thing also for people, even in terms of like, uh, hiring people for jobs and yes. stuff like that, yes. you know, the, the chat GPT is it's trained on the data that's already there. So if you see that, you know, women have been only 5% in this company, then the thing takes it as a rule. Exactly. Uh, yeah. If you have caste biases or like minority biases like that, right. it's a yeah. rule right. yeah. uh, because last 50 years we've been like that. Right. So the machine thinks we are supposed to be like that. Now who's going to sit there and correct that data and say, no, actually we want like equal, then the whole data like screws up. Correct. And not only that, the people sitting and say, I am responsible for removing AI bias, <laughs> is going to do it in a highly subjective, yeah. irrational manner as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So wha for example, who gets to decide that I, my representation should be 50-50? or should it match the exact global distribution as it stands, exactly. it's all going to be very tricky yeah. as we yeah. go Fun forward. Fundamentally, these are statistical models. Don't exactly. forget that. Exactly, right, yeah. Uh, so, yes. We badly need a Turing test to know whether you are the virtual Ashoka or the real Ashoka. Yeah. I want to confirm on algorithmic auditing or revenge porn, revenge pornography of ex-girlfriend yes. using deep fakes. Correct. Then it is a major problem globally. Revenge pornography is being made with the deep fakes from ex girlfriend's one single photo. Yep, yep. It is, it is scary thing. It is scary, absolutely. Is scary. Yep. What is the way out? Is there the algorithmic auditing can uh, uh, say the way out? Can do the way out? <clears throat> I, I think it is honestly very hard. We'll let the experts weigh in. But to your early point about as an identity, right? in the sense of uh, Turing test and all of that. I think we are way past all of that. See, today, right now, we have millions of people who are happily chatting with an AI without realizing that it is an AI. Sir, recently I saw a Metaverse Salvatore Dali chatting with yeah, boy, uh, exactly, students. Right. students. So, so the revenge pornography, I think particularly a serious problem in India, Pakistan, and South Asia, it is a very particularly serious problem. Um, do you feel there are social as well as technological solutions to that? There are both angles, but the technological part is, like, like we said, we need redlining, right? What if there is a law, to yeah. an extent it will yeah. prevent saying that yeah. you can't miscreate cannot, somebody's cannot image, yeah. right? So, so, but in the sense that, see today, unfortunately, models have been open sourced. A weird scenario where open sourcing is now causing the problem, right? And you know, I can also remove guardrails on Llama, remove guardrails on uh, stable diffusion and generate these things, right? So I'm also wondering, like for example, one of the solutions that I think Microsoft, Google and many of these guys, the US government implemented with regard to child pornography back in the day was to say, the moment I detect it, 
at the layer of storage, display, etc., I will use a very high performance algorithm to compare. And if I find anything, I'm going to instantly prevent it from being displayed. So I feel some of these solutions will require edge as well as server side globally agreed upon solutions at the operating system, at Android, at iOS, at everything, right? And in every, every bootleg version of Linux also, right? I know it's a hard problem. But uh, do you foresee that we will be able to do that quicker, uh, fast enough? If, if there is enough political will, we can do anything, right? right we have seen exactly. that. So yeah. that's a question. Exactly. In the end, yes. it's beyond our hands. Exactly. It's in the hand of the, yeah. the people sitting in the higher position. Yeah, I think somebody was saying that the best way for to avoid these dangers is to make sure that the good guys have access to better AI than the bad guys. That's right? that's okay. uh, that's a complete solution. I'm <laughs> totally with it. Like you, know? yes, yeah, that is the so yes, exactly. Yeah. We have this uh, thing to like tell the AI everything about ourselves, and that's exactly what the yes. big guys, the good guys, want. It seems. Yeah, I know. They want to know you inside out, know yes. your decisions, how you're going to make decisions, yeah. and that's going to impact a lot of things. How how it plays with you, yep. and then the uh, uh, digital avatar comes. Yes. Now my question is like, can I murder your digital avatar? Yes. And like. Do, do I get arrested for that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe there's a virtual court of uh, yeah, with virtual lawyers. The metaverse, virtual rape, yeah. and there is yeah. a lot of uh, yes. work happening in that space. Yeah, actually, there's a uh, uh, there's a writer called um, Charlie Strauss, mm -hmm. and near future science fiction, and one of his plot points was a murder inside a video game. Yeah. So somebody killed somebody else's avatar and uh, and wrote a, did it in a very permanent way, right? Delete it from the database and all that. And there are actually people investigating that as a crime. Yeah. Okay. So it's on that interesting note, we will, uh, yes, the, we have the next panel. So we will uh, thank you for your patience and your beautiful questions. Thank you.